Welcome to another Excel VBA tutorial. We are jumping on to a new topic today. So we're going to start talking about pivot tables. So this is going to be a multi-part series. Pivot tables have a lot that we can do with in VBA. So naturally we want to make sure we kind of get into some of the details, but we can think of this video as kind of being the introduction to it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a basic pivot table, kind of define the layout, um, add some fields to it, and then also just do some basic customization. So just things like changing the color scheme and maybe like hiding columns and things like that. So nothing super complicated in this video, just more of an introduction. So with that being said, let's just kind of jump into it. The goal is kind of to recreate this pivot table right here. So color scheme, layout, and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, this is all being fed from a data table that I have on my first sheet called data table sheet. And really kind of something I always tell people a little bit is when they're about to, um, what is it? Oh, sorry, it clicked out a little bit. Uh, is when you're working with pivot tables, you really want to make sure your data is in a good format before you start kind of slicing and dicing. So ideally what you should have is a table like this where each column represents like a single attribute. So one's for country, one's for segments, and there's really no like duplicate column. So one isn't like country one, country two, where really they're containing the same information. You really kind of just want each column to have their own kind of unique information. And then same with metrics. You wouldn't want one for like unit sold one, unit sold two, or things like that. Uh, this kind of just sets us up for success when we're working with our pivot tables. And we, again, we want to make sure that we do that. So this is our data table. We want to take this data table and create a pivot table with it. So I'm going to first delete my pivot table because I already don't want to create another one and we'll actually get an error if I try to create one with the same name and all that kind of fun jazz. Uh, and then from here, we're going to go into our VBA editor. So we'll go up to our developer tab into our visual basic editor right here. And from here, we can actually start working away. Uh, first, you want to make sure you insert a module. So you want to go over here to VBA project window and then right click and then click insert and then module just like that. And then we can create a new subroutine. So we'll say sub create pivot table. And then the first thing that we're going to do is declare variables. So these are going to be the object variables that kind of contain our different objects. And so the first one's going to be called pivot cache. And this we can think of as kind of like a container that's going to contain all of our data in it. And it's going to be stored in memory for us. And it's going to be used in a certain way where it can do all the calculations and all that kind of fun stuff really quick for us. So uh, think of this cache as a container that's stored in memory that we can then manipulate very quickly and very uh, efficiently. So this is what makes pivot tables so fast is our pivot cache. And we'll say as a pivot cache object. And then with a pivot cache, we can then create a pivot table. And so we'll say pivot table. And then this one, as you guessed, is a pivot table. And then we're going to have fields in our table. So row fields, column fields, data fields, page fields. Uh, and we might want to be able to manipulate each one of those fields individually. So we'll need to store them in a object variable. So what we'll do is we'll uh, create another object variable called pivot field. And then this one will be called a pivot field object. And then one final one we need a data table object. So this is going to be our actual list object itself that contains the raw data. And then with this one, what we can do is we can now create a reference to our data table or our data source in this example. And we'll say create a reference to the data table. And then what I'll do is I'll set that data table object equal to the worksheets collection. We're going to go into our data table worksheet, and then we're going to go into the list objects collection that belongs to that worksheet. And this contains all of our list objects. Well, there's only one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, create a reference to that first one. And then from here, we can now create our pivot cache because we've created a reference to our data source. Now we can create 
a reference to the pivot cache. We can create our pivot cache object. So we're going to create a pivot cache and we'll set our pivot cache equal to this workbook. So the workbook itself, uh, pivot caches exist at the workbook level. And if we go in to our pivot caches collection, we can call the create method. And then with this one, there's a couple parameters that we have to pass through. The first one is our source type. So really, where is our data coming from? Where is the source type? Is it a database? Is it an external source or something like that? In our example, it's a database. Database meaning that basically it's an Excel table. We don't know really why they call it data database, but whatever. And then the next one is going to be the source data. So uh, where is the source data actually coming from? The actual data itself. Because we specified the type so it knows, okay, well, we're expecting a, a database, but now where is this database? Well, really, it's just the name of the table. So if we specify the name of the table, Excel will know where we're talking about. So it will know the range and all that kind of fun stuff. So all I want to do is I'm going to call my data table object and then pass through the name property. And that will be my source data. And then there's one final one. This is the version of our uh, pivot cache or pivot table, if you want to think of it like that. Uh, you can do earlier versions of pivot tables if you so choose in VBA. So you can uh, create an earlier ones if you wanted to. You really should have really kind of a specific reason to do that. Otherwise, just do the latest version. The latest version is six. It's There's a special way of saying it. So it's Excel pivot table, I think 2016. It's weird. If you go on the documentation, they don't have a six. But if you record a macro, there's a six. So they only go up to five but a macro will record six. So uh, the documentation's a little bit outdated, but all you have to know is that the lower numbers are basically representing earlier versions of a pivot table. So now that I have my um, pivot cache, I can create that pivot table because I know where to look for the information. So if I say create a pivot table, and we'll set our pivot table object equal to the pivot cache. And then we'll say create pivot tables. We'll call the create pivot table method. And then I need to specify where I want this pivot table to exist. Well, I want it to exist on the pivot table worksheet, exclamation mark, R1C1. Basically, that is just cell A1. There's a whole other discussion about uh, referencing ranges using the RC method. Now that we have that, what's going on? Oh, sorry. Comma, and then underscore. And then from here, I need to name my pivot table. So what's the name of my pivot table going to be? I'll call it something simple, like my new pivot table. And then from here, again, there is a version. So what is the version of our pivot table? table and I'm just going to use the latest one. Okay. So with this, I'm going to snap that over to the right and let's actually create our uh, pivot table now because we have all the information. It's going to be blank, but at least it will be there. So as you can tell, it created a little range right here that references our pivot table and we can even see our pivot table name right there in that little box for us. Um, but as you can tell, there's no like fields or anything like that. So that's what we need to do next. However, if I run this again, you'll see that we'll get an error. It's going, oh, application defined or object defined error. And it happens right here. The reason why we already have a pivot table called my new pivot table. So you can't create one with the same name. So what we're going to have to do is delete my old one uh, and then recreate it. Now in your script, you don't need to do this. This is just me because I'm going to be uh, basically deleting it and then recreating it multiple times. So this is just for me. So I'm going to delete my pivot table. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, go on the active sheet. So the one that I'm currently on, go into the pivot tables collection, look for my new pivot table, and then go to the table range two. So the table range two, basically the pivot table range that it takes up and then call the delete method. And so this will delete it. And so if I run this now, 
we don't get an error. Great. So let's start adding some fields to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say create a row field. And so we're going to say with pivot table, we're going to go into the pivot fields collection. And I'm going to say, hey, add the year field. And then I'm going to close my end with. And I got to specify an orientation. So is it a column? Is it a row? Is it a data field? Or is it a filter? And then the position within that uh, orientation. So first one's going to be my orientation property. That equals Excel row field. So I want this to be a row field. And then the position is equal to one. So it's the first one that I have. So as you can tell, it added that new field. And it is the first one. If I wanted to, I can add another row field and I can have that be the inner one. And so that would be uh, after that 2013, 14 one. So what I can do is again, I just gotta uh, change my field name. And with this one, I will have it be country. And now it's no longer position one, it's position two. So if I run this one, now it is the year and then the country. So pretty cool. Uh, if you ever want to know, I'm assuming at this point you're probably a little bit familiar with pivot tables, but let's just assume you're not. Uh, if you want to know where the fields are coming from, those are just the column headers. So each one of these is its own field in a pivot table. And if you want to see it in a different way, you can always go to the pivot table uh, section of your ribbon if you're over it. So if you're over, you won't see it, but if you're on it, you'll see it. You go to analyze, and then if you go to show, you can go to field list and then you can see all the fields that potentially you could use. So if I wanted to, I could put cogs here. Uh, some don't make sense to be put certain locations. Uh, cogs really be a values one. And then there's columns, rows, and so on. So that's that. Okay. And then let's add a column field. Well, I already have it in the clipboard. So we'll th do this one. This will be a column field. And with this one, maybe I want it to be the month name, right? So I'll have this be the month name, month name. I'm going to change this one to be the column field. And if I change it now, bam, now it added the month's name to the column fields. At this point, it's still blank. doesn't look really useful. Let's add a data field, right? And so we'll put this here. This will be COGS now, so the COGS metric. This will be a data field. Oh, what happened? Oh, that's what happened. Data field. And I'm going to change this to data, just like that. And again, it's still a position of one. And so if I run this, now we can see the COGS uh, calculated for each month for each country. So very cool. All right, so we have a data field, we have a column field, we have a row field. Let's do a filter field. So with this one, I'll copy it. And then with this, it will be called a filter field. But in uh, VBA, they're not called filter. They're actually called page field. So it's a page field. And with this one, maybe I want it to be on the product, right? So I want it to be on the product itself. And again, it's still the first filter that we have. So I'll leave that position as one. So now it adds a filter field. And if I wanted to, I could select each one and then filter it on certain uh, products, for example. So I'll put all. Uh, maybe, for example, when I create my pivot table, I already want to have one column hidden. So for example, maybe I want to have January hidden. Uh, let's see how that would look. So if I wanted to do that where I have it hidden by default, what I can do is I can create a reference to the month name field, and then I can go into the actual one of the items in that field and then set the visible property for it. So what that would look like is a, a hide, hide a pivot item. So what I can do is I can set the pivot field object, the one that I declared up here, Yes, I know, right here. I can set that equal to the pivot table. And then there is a pivot fields 
collection. And then I can go into the month name field. And then what I can do is now I've created a reference to it. Pivot fields have pivot items, so individual items in those fields. And I'll say go into the pivot items collection. And then I got to specify the item that I want to work with. Well, I want to work with January. And then what I want to do is I want to set the property, the visible property of that item equal to false. So this will hide it when I create it. So as you can tell, now it's hidden. It starts at February and not January. If I wanted to, I could put it equal to March. Now January, February, but no March. All right. Maybe I want to change the layout of my pivot table, right? So if I go to design and maybe I want to change it to a tabular one, for example. So something that looks like this right now it's in compact form, but maybe I want to put it in tabular. Well, what I can do is if I uh, change the layout, layout, <laughs> uh, I will go into my pivot table object. I'll go into the row axis layout method and then I will go to the tabular row. So this will change it to a tabular layout. So now it's in that tabular layout. And then maybe I want to change the color of it. So I don't like blue. Maybe I want uh, this orange one, right? Well, with this one, what I'll do is I'll go into my pivot table and then I'll go into my table style two property. And then I have to specify the style that I want it to be. So I'll say pivot style light, and then this one is 24. So I'll change it back to yellow or something like that. If you want the name of it, all you got to do is click down the drop down and then hover over it. And you'll see how it popped up. So it says white pivot style light 24. You just need pivot style light 24 and it's all one word. Uh, and then you just treat it as a string. I'll put it into something like a little bit more noticeable. Okay, so if I run this one now, this will change the color. So this will change the color. Now it's this kind of white orange one. So if I wanted to, I'll put it, uh, whoa. Don't know what happened there. Whew. <laughs> That's a first. Um, oh, I think it's because I hit the shortcut key in there. That's probably why. Well, that's something new. I didn't know that did that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so this is kind of like more of a minimalist uh, pivot table if you wanted to have that kind of layout. Uh, but yeah, I'll stop it at this point. I think this is kind of enough to at least introduce us to the topic of pivot tables and at least how to create one and, you know, just do some basic manipulations. If you have any questions about what, kind of what we covered today, please make sure to put those uh, questions down in the comments below. I'll try to make sure to get back to you. Also, if you could make sure to like the video, we always appreciate the support. Um, and also it kind of helps make sure that the video is kind of a little bit easier to find and all that kind of fun stuff. So we always appreciate when you guys are kind of helping us out like that. And then also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. Um, next couple videos obviously will be on pivot tables, uh, but we'll kind of go into the more uh, complicated stuff. So again, we just wanted to introduce it at this point, but now we'll kind of go into like calculated fields and all that kind of fun stuff uh, and then see how we can use pivot table events. I think one of the more popular ones is, hey, I have a field right here, right? And if they change the value in this cell, I want my pivot table to automatically filter to that. I can't tell you how many times I've seen that one. So. I made a little script that will do that for you. Uh, and then I'll make a video on that because that's not necessarily intuitive how it works. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks again for watching guys. We will see you in the next video.